and welcome to the backstory where I explain the backstory behind the anime and manga news stories of the week, at least some of the major ones that require some explanation. Starting with the retiring of uh, Toshio Suzuki, the producer at Studio Ghibli. Now, um, of course, Studio Ghibli being a very storied anime film company uh, with films by Hayao Miyazaki, Anisa Takahara, Grave of the Fireflies, Totoro, uh, Princess Mononoke, all sorts of, of amazing films and remarkable films. Uh, Suzuki's been sort of sitting in the, in the background. He's always there um, to be the public face of the company. The importance of Suzuki is that he used to work for Animage, one of the big um, anime magazines at the time. Think of like, oh, it's just kind of hard to think of, a, of an example magazine over here. Um, Asimov Science Fiction, maybe, or, or um, one of these, uh, that's more, uh, Animage is more of a fanzine, or more uh, focused on fans. It's still around, still huge. And so he was working for them, and he went to get an interview with uh, Miyazaki and famously was snubbed by him and proceeded to uh, uh, print an article um, with a photograph of the back of Miyazaki's head and saying, this is Miyazaki, because that's all I could ever, you know, get to see of him. And, uh, but they formed a friendship, and uh, Miyazaki was trying to make Nausicaa at the time and couldn't get any backers, and Suzuki was the one who said, basically, we will publish this in Animage. And um, we'll, you know, we'll publish a manga version of it. You draw the manga, we'll publish it. And then with a manga adaptation existing, we can uh, get backers. No one would make a, no, no one would fund a, an anime film on its own. Uh, back then, or even these days, it's very rare. So that's how Studio Ghibli came to be, basically. They, they did the manga, then they found uh, art animators for that through Animage. They actually put advertisements in Animage for animators saying, we're going to animate Nausicaa the Valley of Wind, you know, uh, right in and so they did and uh suzuki was instrumental in all of that and he was the one who helped them found studio ghibli and he's been working the business side of studio ghibli for decades to allow miyazaki and takahara to work the creative side so he's been just instrumental in making sure that everything runs uh, now he said he's going to stay on as general manager so he's going to basically stay around and still do things um he'll still have a job obviously but he's not going to be uh, directly involved in films, um, you know, uh, in, in each film, it looks like. So that's good because his experience will still you know, be around to be, to be called on. Um, but unfortunately, you know, he won't be there to, to guide those films, which is just kind of unfortunate because he's, just, he's a very important person for anime in general. So wish him well as he moves on to a new phase in his life. Um, Final, uh, secondly and finally, actually, I want to talk about the Kuroku's basketball uh, suspect, uh, Hirofumi Watanabe, who was arrested. Now, this happened a while back. I'm trying to remember how long ago it was. Um, October 2012, so it has been a um, year and a half, that these threats started appearing for events that were featuring a manga called Kuroku's basketball. So various doujinshi events and fan events were getting these threat letters um, some including powder and liquid substances, um, basically death threats against them. And there were just a bunch of these sent around all over the place. Several events were canceled, um, several were moved around, um, and then the one at uh, uh, Tokyo Big Site in October of, uh, uh, of 2012 um, did continue on and didn't have any, any problems with it. But there were, you know, th there were some, some real concerns. So he, uh, this individual was arrested, and then in court... He admitted to all charges on his first day in court. Um, he added he'll accept the court's judgment and, and any punishment without appeal. So he's not going to fight it, basically. Um, he was arrested December 15th. Um, now, here's the interesting thing. A couple of interesting things. Um, he said he made the threats out of jealousy uh, because he was abused by bullies and his parents during childhood. Um, and he also said that he has homosexual tendencies. Don't know what that has to do with it, but... I don't know. Um, he said he wanted to kill himself. He was suicidal before making the threats. And he, he said he plans to do so when he's released from prison. That way society can rest assured I won't do anything stupid again. Okay. Um, and he said that once he learned about the Magaka's successful career behind Kroka's basketball, um, he thought that uh, if I somehow managed to harass and depress him, I could drag him into my suicidal journey. Ooh. Um, and here's where it gets even weirder. He added that he did not feel guilty, he will not make an apology, and is too poor to pay restitution, but he will accept responsibility. Okay. 
so definitely a, a interesting uh, individual and, and definitely has some issues to work through. So we will see what happens with that uh, as the story progresses. Uh, the weird thing is he's kind of smiling at the camera in the, the clip I'm seeing here. So it's odd guy. But at least he's caught. There's no other issues. And, and fortunately, nothing happened as a result of it. You know, he didn't actually follow through on any of this stuff. He was just trying to harass, basically. It's one of the reasons you don't negotiate with terrorists. So anyway, that is it uh, for the backstory. And I uh, hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.